Okay, welcome back. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start a discussion of the behaviors of cosine and sine, and specifically the domain in the period of those two functions. So if we look at this unit circle here, uh, remember, obviously, the domain is going to be all the values that go into the function, right? So it's all the values of t, right? So t is a real number. So remember, we're taking t. t is the measurement of the arc length from 0, right? So 0 is here. And we're measuring from the distance from 0. So t is a real number that goes all the way around. Again, in the counterclockwise direction, it's positive. In the clockwise direction is negative, just like on the real number line, by construction, numbers to the left of zero are negative, to the right of zero is positive. So similarly, if we go counterclockwise, that's the positive direction. And of course, the distance we can go is going to go all the way back around. But again, we're measuring from the original distance. So if we measure all the way around, that's 2 pi, but we can keep going. And so we can measure another revolution to 4 pi. And we can go another revolution all the way to 6 pi. So the range, and again, we could do that again in the negative direction too. So the range of sine and cosine is going to be, um, or excuse me, not the, the range, the, uh, the domain of sine and cosine is going to be all real numbers. Okay? because you just can keep going around and around the circle. Um, uh, let's see here. Oops. So all real numbers. Now the range now the range, think about the range. Range are all the values that come out, right? So all the values that come out. Now remember, cosine is what? Equal to x. And sine t is equal to y. So remember that. So now look at the values of y and x. What happens? Here, x starts at 1. And as you travel around the circle, it goes to 0. And then it goes to negative 1 and then back to zero, and then back to a positive one. So, and then as you go around, it does the same thing. And if you look at the y direction, the y, the y um, uh, coordinate, so that starts at zero, and then as you go, it goes up to one, and then as you go to pi, it goes back to zero, and then it goes to negative one as you go to three pi over two, and then you go to 2 pi, it goes back to 0. And so both of these have the same range, which is going to be between um, 1 and negative 1 inclusive. Okay, so x and y have the same range, right? Cosine t and sine t have the same range. Now, so notice uh, also, like I said, we can keep going around and around the circle. Now, here's the thing. If I go around once full revolution, remember 0 is the same as 2 pi, which is the same as 4 pi when it comes to the value of sine and cosine. Okay, and in fact, 
if we remember that 2 pi is one revolution around the circle, then any point on the circle, we can get back to that point by just adding 2 pi. Okay? In fact, it doesn't even matter how many times we go around the, rev the, the, the circle, right? We can go around the circle a hundred times and add, add multiple um, ro revolutions. So if we start at this point here, we can do as many multiples of 2 pi, right? It, that'll bring us full circle back to the same point. And so we can do multiples of 2 pi, okay? And so that brings us to another conclusion that using the fact that we can go one revolution, two revolutions, three and, and, and more, as many as we want to, that we have this relationship. So we can take cosine t will be equal to um, um, well first we'll do obviously from what we just discussed this will be cosine 2 plus or t plus 2 pi right and then we have sine t is going to be equal to sine of t plus 2 pi right so all we're going to do is go one revolution so that's going to bring us to the same point right so in other words sine of 0 is the same as sine of 2 pi which is the same as sine of 4 pi if I go to pi over 4 right this point here Well, if I go to one revolution, well, that means sine of, uh, let's say, sine of pi over 4, which is, um, which is y, right, which is going to be 1 half. Okay, but that's also going to be equal to sine of pi 4, pi over 4 plus 2 pi, which is the same as 9 pi over 4, right? Or excuse me, hold on. Yeah, so that's going to be 9 pi over 4. Okay, and then I can go another revolution, which is going to get, bring me to 17 pi over 4, right? And so I get this relationship here, and the same relationship holds for cosine. So, and all of this leads to the general result that I'm going to write down now. Is that I can go any multiple of 2 pi and I'm going to get the same answer. So, the general result is that cosine t and sine t are going to be also equal to the general case, which is going to be equal to cosine t, in this case, plus 2n pi, right? So any multiple of, where n is an integer, right? So n is an integer. Okay, and then sine t plus 2n pi, right? So any multiple of 2 pi, where again n is an integer. <clears throat> um, now, for any integer n and real number t, any function be that behaves this way, where it has a repetitive uh, or cyclic 
manner, it behaves in a cyclic or, or repetitive manner, we call these types of functions periodic. And so sine and cosine are periodic functions. Okay, so um, Now, the other functions um, that we're going to discuss, the other trigonometric functions are also periodic, but we're going to discuss those uh, at a later time in another section. Um, but, um, suffice it to say that these are periodic functions, and uh, we'll stop there and uh, continue next time. Have a great day.